anyways, let's get down to the nitty gritty. You must have an enormous record collection. Yeah. What are your all time top five yes! records? Oh boy. Yes! The devil's here we are, top five of my KISS album rankings. It has taken forever, even longer than I expected. But hey, come on, give me a break. I make other content too, like live podcasts, all the shorts I've been putting out, doing the work, putting the work in. Like last night, I did a guest spot on In My Head with Brant. Great channel, great guy. Loved chatting with him last night. Look forward to everybody seeing that. So subscribe to his channel, subscribe to our channel. Give this video a like, of course, comment. Give me your thoughts on where Rock and Roll Over is on your list. Brand new website that just launched yesterday. Social media links. Patreon.com slash Hills and Quads. That link directly to Patreon, to our Patreon. All of our merch. Contact information about the show. You know about it though. This ain't your first time here. This isn't your first rodeo. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Here it is at number five. Rock and Roll Over. At number five, Rock and Roll Over, released November 11th, 1976. Barely eight months after Destroyer was released and just enough time to tour and record this album. Produced, engineered, and mixed by Eddie Kramer and recorded at the Star Theater in Nanuet, New York, which is a really cool way to record an album, especially for Kiss, on a stage in a theater. However, Peter did record the drums at a bathroom to get the sound right and had video monitors set up to communicate with the rest of the band. While it is coming in at number five on my list, this album is very strong and gets away from all of the added effects that kick Destroyer out of my top five. It's a straight up classic rock and roll Kiss album filled with innuendo, driving songs, and even a ballad from Peter. While Hard Luck Woman was written with Rod Stewart in mind by Paul, they kept it and had Peter sing it hoping to cash in on the success of Beth. It's hard to pick a least favorite, favorite, and honorable mention from this album, but here it goes. Least favorite, see you in your dreams. Not saying I don't like this song, but even Gene was so unhappy with it, he re-recorded it for his solo album. So that kind of gives me an easy way out. But man, Ace has a badass solo and Peter has a really cool drum fill in the breakdown. Favorite track, Mr. Speed. It's really a shame non-KISS fans don't know this one. I really think it could have been a single and probably a hit. Also, why the hell didn't they at least put this in the set for the tour, for this tour, Rock and Roll Over? Yeah, we've got bits and pieces of it here and there, but this is such a live sounding song. That riff, so simplistic, yet sounds fresh even today. Gene's vocals even really stand out on this one, and of course, Paul Stanley is fantastic as always. Honorable mention, this is almost as difficult as least favorite. I've got eight songs left on this album that can take this spot. Today, I'm going with Take Me. Added reverb or chorus on the background vocal gives it that live feel, the riff, Ace's guitar work in general, and of course, that innuendo. Put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket. That's what I want in my Kiss songs. What do you think about Rock and Roll Over at number five? I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, I'm crazy, either higher or lower than five. But let me know what you think in the comments. Give me your favorite song, your least favorite song, and your honorable mention too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with number four.